back right now and get really present. Quit, quit yawning. Okay. Breathe in and just feel your chair because that's what we're talking about. See, it's, it's being where you are. It means being your mind is where your body is, right? You know, you're all together. You know, sometimes you know, you're sitting in a chair and your mind is somewhere else and your body's right here. That happens sometimes for me during meditation. You know, when we're doing meditation sometimes at Eckhart Tolle, I notice I'm thinking about what I'm going to eat. During like that. And my mom, and there's my, you know, mind way out there, my body's here. So what I'm talking about is bringing your body just in, in alignment. You know, and that's all presence really is. That's what it is. It's just coming together. So there's one thing that we all really have in common, and that's that life is uncertain. You know, it just is. We don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, you know, let alone a lifetime. And we got to learn to be present with that, you know. And that, it's hard. It's really hard to know. Actually, it's hard not to know. It really is. And another thing we have in common is that each of us want to be happy joy. We want to be happy through this uncertainty. We, we want joy. We want happiness. And it's not always there, especially when our mind is going a mile a minute. See, we want to be better than okay. I, I, I love what I think it was Ram Dass who said that, that we don't want to just walk about pick, pecking at crumbs like pigeons, convincing ourselves that it's joyful when it's our destiny to fly see we should be soaring that's what he said it's not Ram Das, the Ram Das we know but it's Ram Das who he was named after 17th century Hindu mystic and he said that we should be soaring and we do that when we're in the present moment he said when we truly experience life not just think about life what we have to do see most of us go through life without really experiencing our life that, that's huge to me and we only experience life in the present moment. See, what, what uh, Ram Dass said is when you go to a, actually it's Ramakrishna, who said when you go to a mango tree, you don't go to count the leaves. You go to pluck and eat the mango. That's why I put this up here. You know, when you eat, it's experiencing the sensations. It's being able to take your time to, to taste, to smell, you know, to connect with each other, to really experience life. You know, that's what this whole idea of presence is. It's to be able to experience your life. You know, not just think about it. And, and, and it's hard. It's not the easiest thing to do. But then again, it is. Spirit is simple. Spirit is simple. It's funny that you talked about house cleaning. That's, that's really weird because I'm going to talk about my, a housekeeper that we have too. Um, one of the favorite things that I have in my room, and I've actually had a, could you do the next picture, David, for me, please, um, is this sign. And it's Simple Spirit. It's a little wooden sign, you know, not that attractive. But every time I see it, it just, like, touches my heart because I realize that really all we have to do is get present. All we have to do is breathe, and spirit is so simple. There is nothing else to do but breathe and feel it. If we let go of everything else, we feel it. Well, the sign actually reminds me of two things. It's that spirit is simple, and it also reminds me that I need to be comfortable with change. Because um, unlike Judy, I do have a housekeeper now. <laughs> and uh, and I'll tell you the truth, she's a friend, and I just love her to pieces. And she loves to go. I live in you know part of the house. You guys have been over there. We, I share it with my kids. So in my part of the house, she loves cleaning that part. You know, I don't know if she loves cleaning the other. I wouldn't. But, uh, <laughs> but she comes into my room, and I can tell that it's really fun for her. Because when I get in there, into my room, everything that I put you know, in a certain place is all in a different place. Okay, you know, it's like, I mean, and, and I'm talking about this sign specifically, right? I have it on my desk right there. I get home one week and it's on my mantle where the fireplace is. Then another week it's on the altar, you know, where I'll be sitting, you know, at a chair and I see it over here. And she keeps moving it around. And at first I have to admit, you know, it was, would that irritate you? <laughs> you know, it was a little bit disturbing, but I thought, you know, especially this week, I got to thinking about, oh, there's that sign again. It was I was in bed and I saw it way across the room on this shelf, and I got to thinking about it, and I thought, wow, what a gift! You know, I started to say, I started to see it again. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you don't even just get kind of um, you put blinders on. You go through your life and everything's the same, but my room changes all the time because of her. So I thought, wow, you know, that is such a gift that, that I'm reminded of simple spirit every time. And I'm reminded that I'm seeing it with new eyes. I'm seeing my room with new eyes because of Betty. You know, she moves everything around. 
And I, I'm thinking and trying to use this as a metaphor for our lives because sometimes we don't want that change. We want everything to stay the same. But when we get open to being able to see it differently, you know, seeing different angles, because I look at it differently now, I don't get to see it exactly the way I had planned. It's, I don't, unless, unless I put it back, and I don't want to do that because it would hurt her feelings. So I, I, <laughs> I, I leave it that way, you know. But, but it's, it's a gift. It's a gift to be able to do that, see? And I don't think it's an accident. I don't think it's an accident that Betty moves stuff around. I think I needed to be more flexible with change in my life. I think that, I always say this, is that everything that happens in your life, you, there's a part that you play in it that you make it happen. You know, so why would you get upset about it? You know, it's, a, it's something that I need to be able to be with. So I think that the universe gives us, you know, kind of clues. It gives us clues if we're in the present moment as to what to do next. And if you don't follow it, it gives you a kick, doesn't it? Has, any, has the universe ever kicked you? You know, big time. Because you haven't changed when you should have changed. It's given you all these clues to move forward, to change your life. And you don't do it, and guess what? It changes it for you. Boy, I've had that happen. So I'm paying attention now. I'm paying attention. You know, I'd rather make the changes than have the universe do it for me. Go ahead. Now sometimes, you know, you, you see life, and you're in the present moment, and it's painful. I know that pain. I know that pain so deeply. And what we're called to do is to be able to feel that pain too. You know, just because you're in the present moment doesn't mean that life is all glorious all the time. Sometimes the present moment is painful with financial problems, with divorce, with loss, with deaths. You know, I've gone through several deaths recently, and there's a lot of loss and a lot of pain. But we're talking about when we can be present with it, when we can be present with our feelings, we live our life deeply. You know, we experience the whole fabric of life because that's what we're called to do, is to experience this, this life and not live on the surface of it. I think that's a really big deal, is not living on the surface of life. I mean, we, we're here. We're here to really live deeply and to experience whatever is going on, wherever is going on in your life. It's supposed to be going on. You're supposed to be with it. You're supposed to be with it. Wherever you are is an opportunity for you to grow, and there's no other place that you could be to grow. And that's the whole purpose of being here, is to grow enough to connect with that incredible spirit that each of us, to know that, to know that spirit, to experience God in you. That's why we're here, to experience God. Not to read about God and study about God and read every single book you can, although I love to, and that's fun. But it doesn't make a darn bit of difference until I can experience God, and I can only experience God in the now moment. See? And God gets covered up when I'm off thinking of a million other things. But when I become present, you know, and feel the podium, and I connect with you, I feel the Spirit run right through me. Whether there's painful experiences all around, we always have that moment. See, in that moment are the answers. Stilling the mind. You know, I, it's the biggest practice that there is, is to be able to still your mind. But it's the most important thing that you'll ever do. We have a still center. A still center. And in this still center is healing power. My little grandson has, I just rem reminded, he's got athlete's feet, he's six years old, and he, he's got these, this um, scaly kind of feet, and he's going, Grandma, where's that healing power now? You know, he goes, where is it? Where is it? You know, and I said, it's right here. You know, it's right here, right within you. You know, and, and that's what we forget sometimes is that, that whatever we're going through, when we are quiet enough, the answers come. You know, the answers are right there in the, the silence, in the intelligence of this, this state of no mind. We have a, a sign in the office, in our office, and it says no mind. Remember that guy that came in and looked at us and said, no mind, never came back again. <laughs> he never did. That's the truth. He said, what's that about? You know, didn't get it. What's no mind? See, no mind, no mind means the pure intelligence, the pure wisdom, the pure love of God. It's the same thing as actually the big mind that religious science talks about, the mind of God, right? Religious science talks about the mind of God. That's no mind. 
That's not thoughts. That's no mind. And each of us have that running through us. It's running through this room right now. No mind is love. And it's who you are. It's who I am. And, and when we enter this no mind, it's like we have a skill. We start to learn how to deal with everyday life. And, and I, since I've been working on this talk and I've been reading it, every time I, this is, these, it's so good for us to do talks because it puts us right into what we need to know, right? And so whatever we're talking about, you'll always know because, um, you know, Judy needs to experience what she does. She talks about that and then I need to do so you can always tell where we're at in our lives depending on what we're talking about. But I was thinking, I was at the bank and it, there was a line at the bank Saturday morning I had to deposit that check from that bail. And um, I'll be darned if there was like 20 people. I, I went, what's going on? I got there. There was way ahead of me. And I'm going, I gotta get going. You know, I had a whole bunch to do. And so I could feel myself start to get anxious. Okay, so big mind. I breathed, because that's what we're talking about. You breathe. That's how you get there. You breathe, you get present, you know. And there was like a clearing. And the irritation turned to compassion. And that's what it does. It turned to compassion for those poor people on the, you know, other side. Can you imagine how that must feel to see 20 people lined up and have your supervisor sitting there eating a banana, looking at you, you know? <laughs> you, know you know, so my irritation turned to anger, and that's what happens when we get into big mind, when we get into the still center of our heart, the sweet still center, and that's what we're talking about, you know, is that that's the healing center. That's where when we are in that place, we don't have the resentments any longer. And when we do, we can let them dissolve quicker. We turn them into compassion, you know? It doesn't matter if our lives are like right now, Judy and my life are just like crazy lives. We've got lots of stuff going on. But there's times in my life where nothing's been going on, you know, where it's been very quiet. You know, and it doesn't matter. You just have to be where you are. You can, Gandhi, what Gandhi said was that I'm always at rest, and he worked 15 hours a day doesn't mean he didn't do anything. It just meant that his still small center was big. He felt it as he did his stuff in his life. And that's what we're, we're called to do. When I was in Park City not too long ago, you know, where there was all this stuff and chaos and running, you know, all of this family, right? I talked about that before, all this family going on chaos. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful um, cabin with creeks and deers and things. When they went to bed, I could hear it. Right? I could sit there and I could hear it. Now my point being that it was always there, right? The creek always ran whether the big mouths in the house were still yapping, right? <laughs> the creek was still there. God's always there. We just block it. We block it. So what the call today is, is to be able to cleanse our perceptions, you know, be able to step into the small still point, you know, get present with our life so that we can see with the eyes of love, so that we can see with different, a whole different perception. When we're in the stillness, we'll never be the same person again once you've touched it. And the more you touch it, the more your life changes. The more meditation you do, the more quiet, the more times that you reach into that still point, you change as a person. You change. And it only happens when we are where we are. So the call, be where you are. Live from presence. You can be joyous in uncertainty. So my prayer is that we be where we are, right here, right now. We experience life, body, mind, heart, and spirit. So that each of us can taste the mangoes. Thank you. Yeah.